We are told over and over and over again that the consumer is in great shape. They're absorbing all of these price increases like nobody's business and they keep shopping. And of course, you know, we've had wage gains and people are continuing to ask for more. So don't worry, it is the consumer that will help us avoid any level of recession because they are in great shape. Do you believe that? What is the state of the consumer? Let's talk about it, coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'm going to encourage you to click that bell and subscribe so that you know what's going on because it's critical that you do. And ITM specializes in custom strategies where we can position your gold and silver foundation and you need that foundation. You need to become your own central banker to protect your wealth. And even more important than that, honestly, to protect your freedom. So let's just dive right in because Hey, Procter and Gamble CEO says the consumer is holding up extremely well. Now Procter and Gamble is, I don't have anything in my house that I know of that is part of their but they're pretty mainstream and they rake in those profits after that 10% price hike amid inflation. And as I've shown you before, a lot of these corporations have used the cover of inflation to generate even greater profits. Now I'm wondering, do you think that could add to the inflation? And if there is a necessity do you think that people are still going to have to buy it? Maybe they trade down in quality a little bit, but you know, you got to eat. I mean, there are things that you just have to do. Frankly, it is a flipping fantasy. The U S consumer, consumer is holding up. Well, mm. unlike European con customers, U S consumers are sticking with brand names. Well, I'm not really sure that that's a hundred percent true, but they are indeed taking on debt to sustain and maintain a standard of living. And quite honestly, when they created the fiat money system to begin with, they absolutely knew that this is what was going to happen. And it was part of the plan. And it's really disgusting because when you have slave, when you have debt, you're a slave right? Gold is the, what is it? Gold is the money of Kings. Silver is the money of peasants and debt is the money of slaves. I'd rather be a King or a peasant and have my real money than be a slave debt. Because if that's the case, you, then you have no choices. You've given up your freedom. You've given up your choices. So the question is, if you're taking on debt, how long can the consumer keep this up? Because at some point you're not going to be able to take on more debt. With rising inflation, bank failures, and massive layoffs across multiple sectors, the future of the economy remains uncertain. It's no wonder the central banks have been getting prepared by stockpiling gold. At ITM Trading, we have spent over 27 years building a team of seasoned researchers and analysts who can help you prepare for any financial crisis. Our experts are ready to provide you with proven strategies to safeguard your wealth and assets in the event of an economic downturn or currency reset, which is frankly inevitable. Don't wait until it's too late. Schedule your free gold and silver strategy call by clicking on the link in the description below. And we do know we've talked about this so many times in the past, more young adults, but more people are living paycheck to paycheck. Rising cost of living creates generational differences and the share of young adults struggling to cover the bills are rising. So this is the black is March of 22 and the blue is March of 23. This is the rate of change year over year. And yeah, Gen Z is taking on a lot more. They're living paycheck to paycheck and they're really struggling financially. 
but millennials aren't doing a whole lot better. Look at this, maybe more of the Gen Z, but good God, millennials, you're already up to 73.2%. Gen X, 64.2%. And then the baby boomers and the seniors, 49.5% living from paycheck to paycheck. Gen X is getting ready. I mean, this is when they're building their retirement income. And baby boomers and seniors, this is when they're using that retirement income. This is a problem. This is a big problem. And it's not getting any better. But at least it's getting better for Gen X and baby boomers, I suppose. I don't really agree with that. I think we've got a lot more problems ahead because most of the largest occupations are still below average wages. I mean, we can see this retail, home health care, general ops managers, fast food and counter workers, cashiers, nurses. Well, they're a little bit above, but laborers, customer services representatives, don't get me started on that one, Stockers and order fillers, office clerks, janitors, waiters. I mean, these are all well below other than the registered nurse and the general and ops managers. These are all well below the average wages. This is a problem. Many up to $250,000 a year wage earners are still talking about being paycheck to paycheck. 1971, 9,500 bucks could support a family of four with one wage earner. Now you need two and you're still paycheck to paycheck. But many older Americans haven't even begun to save for retirement. So that means they're going to be dependent upon social security. Yikes. 27% of people age 59 and older have no money set aside for their later years. 27%. Does it get less expensive as you get older? Well, not if you're not healthy. It gets more and more expensive. So we know we have a global crisis. But for those aging Americans who do, do have retirement accounts, persistent inflation has thwarted their plans, worsening the seven trillion retirement savings shortfall. And the, you know the worst part about it? It's all by design. None of this was really necessary when we had a good money system, when we had restrictions on how much debt we could accumulate, when the system was more fair. When in the beginning, if you did not like what the government was doing, you'd go in and you'd swap a $20 bill for a $20 gold coin, pull the gold out of the system and create restrictions around what governments could do. They had to take that away. Next is their ability to easily go below zero. That's coming up with CBDCs in this new digital world. Become your own central banker. I'm just saying. An average 80% of the population ends up in extreme poverty as we go through these transitions. And I'm going to tell you, do not believe them if they say, well, we bring out the CBDCs, there will be no more inflation and everything will be fine. That's not the end of it. They have to take all of your wealth to start over with. So don't believe them until there's a component of gold in there. But more than 30% of respondents said their net worth is zero or less, meaning they have more debts than assets. That's especially true for younger generations with 41% of Gen Z and 38% of millennials saying they have zero or negative net worth. For people age 59 and over, that number was 21%. That is scary. And do you, by the way, have anybody in any areas where you might have to help? Because this is, we're all in this together and we're going to have to help. Today, you have a choice. You have a choice to accumulate physical gold and silver and make sure that you are secure in food, water, energy, as well as security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get it done. We are running out of time and we are running out of choices. 
consumer loans. Let's just look at what this looks like because this is how people have been doing it. And you can see this, this graph goes back to 2000 and I think 10. And you can see that the answer always is more debt. And this is revolving credit. So look, this was 2000, this was 2020, and they pumped all of this money into the system. This is where we stand right now. I'm telling you, is that sustainable? Up, up, and up. But I want to show you this. Now, so what they're saying is consumer loans, credit cards, and other revolving plans at all commercial banks are $983.1513 billion. That's a lot. However, as of February 2023, the most current numbers, 1.220.37297 trillion dollars has been turned into a security and sold to you. I think it's interesting that Wall Street has sold more consumer debt products than there are consumer debt. Now you're counting on these products. You are counting on people having the ability to continue to pay for this debt. Can they? We're about to find out because what we know is that delinquency rates on consumer loans at all commercial banks are up very substantially. So if you have any of this garbage product in your portfolio, you might want to think about getting rid of it while you still can. The four biggest U.S. lenders wrote off a combined $3.4 billion in bad consumer loans in the first three months of 2023. That is, my friends, a 73% increase from a year earlier. Now, it was worse going into 2020 but you can see the change. So this was all of the money that they gave to the consumers so the consumers could continue to spend and also pay down their debt. So again, they could continue to spend. And then all the money printing, all that inflation. I mean, the writing is on the wall. Can you read it? Because I really suggest that you do. Because at the same time that this is happening, hiring plans for U.S. small businesses fall to the lowest since 2020. Share of firms planning to add workers drops to 15%. And compensation plans settle back in hopeful sign for inflation. But I'm not really sure that that's, that the people out there, workers out there, realize this yet. But the figures suggest tightness in the labor market is gradually easing and will help restrain wage pressures that have contributed to higher inflation. A net 42% reported raising compensation down from 46% in February. And just over a fifth said they plan to boost wages in the next three months, matching the smallest share since 2021. So it looks like the Fed is getting what they've been asking for, quite honestly. Just be aware, and especially with what's been happening in the regional banking sector, small businesses created 12.9 million net new jobs between 1996 and 2021, accounting for 66% of net new jobs created since 1996. Well, if the, if the small businesses stop hiring, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? For those people that are out there looking for wage earners, because community banks play an absolutely crucial and critical role in helping small businesses get off the ground, hire, meet expenses, et cetera. And there's been major contraction in that area, especially since You know, First Republic now went out. So we've got five banks, five count them, that have since the beginning of this year that have gone out. Makes lenders pretty jittery. And this is going to be a problem for hiring and in the small business community. Because workers demand at least 76,000 to start a new job. Are you kidding me? If 
if small businesses, large businesses, boy, they sure built in a lot of, of excess money to goose their profits while they had the cover. But the problem is, will they be able to maintain that cover? I'm not sure. And what are they saying? The reservation wage is the average lowest wage people surveyed would accept for a new job. Women accept a whole lot less than men, but this is the average. And it looks like this right here. And it looks like it's pretty darn persistent, doesn't it? Yeah. Is that wage pressure going to go away? Of course, CEOs make a whole lot more than that. Are they going to pull back on their wages and their other compensations? And what's the answer? Really? The answer is for you to become your own central bank and for you to accumulate this while it's still dirt flipping cheap because it's severely undervalued. So the consumer is supported by this, not this stuff. This will not support the average wage earner or the consumer because this is losing value. Every time they've done this, what's already out there loses more and more value. So this is the opportunity. You accumulate an undervalued asset that is in a long-term positive trend and you avoid those overvalued instruments that are in a long-term negative trend. And the real trend is the purchasing power. So if you are holding this, you're losing purchasing power value, even if it looks like it's going up. Because the reality is, is when you've got this in your possession, you hold it, you own it outright. It is the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. This, all counterparty risk. Who's your counterparty? Central banks. So if you haven't already, make sure that you give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, make sure to click that Calendly link below if you don't have your strategy in place. If you do have your strategy in place, is it all executed? Get it done. So again, leave us a thumbs up, leave comments and share, 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 because do not forget financial shields are made of physical metal, gold and silver, not paper or promises or lies. This is a big fat lie. And how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.